The Principles of Mathematics POM, is a book written by Bertrand Russell in 1903. In it he presented his famous paradox and argued his thesis that mathematics and logic are identical. The book presents a view of the foundations of mathematics and has become a classic reference. It reported on developments by Giuseppe Pino, Mario Pieri, Richard Dedekind, Georg Cantor, and others. In 1905 Louis Couturat published a partial French translation that expanded the book's readership. In 1937 Russell prepared a new introduction saying, "...such interest as the book now possesses is historical, and consists in the fact that it represents a certain stage in the development of its subject." Further editions were printed in 1938, 1951, 1996, and 2009. Topic: Contents. The Principles of Mathematics consists of 59 chapters divided into seven parts, indefinables in mathematics, number, quantity, order, infinity and continuity, space, matter and motion. In Chapter 1, "...definition of pure mathematics," Russell asserts that there is an anticipation of relativity physics in the final part as the last three chapters consider Newton's laws of motion, absolute and relative motion, and Hertz's dynamics. However, Russell rejects what he calls the relational theory, and says on page 489, for us, since absolute space and time have been admitted, there is no need to avoid absolute motion, and indeed no possibility of doing so. In his review, G. H. Hardy says, Mr. Russell is a firm believer in absolute position in space and time, a view as much out of fashion nowadays that chapter 58, Absolute and Relative Motion, will be read with peculiar interest. Early reviews Reviews were prepared by G. E. Moore and Charles Sanders Pierce, but Moore's was never published and that of Pierce was brief and somewhat dismissive. He indicated that he thought it unoriginal, saying that the book can hardly be called literature and Whoever wishes a convenient introduction to the remarkable researches into the logic of mathematics that have been made during the last 60 years will do well to take up this book. G. H. Hardy wrote a favorable review expecting the book to appeal more to philosophers than mathematicians. But he says, I, in spite of its 500 pages the book is much too short. Many chapters dealing with important questions are compressed into five or six pages, and in some places, especially in the most avowedly controversial parts, the argument is almost too condensed to follow. And the philosopher who attempts to read the book will be especially puzzled by the constant presupposition of a whole philosophical system utterly unlike any of those usually accepted. In 1904, another review appeared in Bulletin of the American Mathematical Society, 11 74 93, written by Edwin Bidwell Wilson. He says, the delicacy of the question is such that even the greatest mathematicians and philosophers of today have made what seem to be substantial slips of judgment and have shown on occasions an astounding ignorance of the essence of the problem which they were discussing. All too frequently it has been the result of a wholly unpardonable disregard of the work already accomplished by others. 
Wilson recounts the developments of Pinot that Russell reports, and takes the occasion to correct Henry Poincaré who had ascribed them to David Hilbert. In praise of Russell, Wilson says, Surely the present work is a monument to patience, perseverance, and thoroughness. Page 88 Topic. Second edition In 1938 the book was reissued with a new preface by Russell. This preface was interpreted as a retreat from the realism of the first edition and a turn toward nominalist philosophy of symbolic logic. James Feibelman, an admirer of the book, thought Russell's new preface went too far into nominalism so he wrote a rebuttal to this introduction. Feibelman says, it is the first comprehensive treatise on symbolic logic to be written in English, and it gives to that system of logic a realistic interpretation. Later reviews In 1959 Russell wrote My Philosophical Development, in which he recalled the impetus to write the principles It was at the International Congress of Philosophy in Paris in the year 1900 that I became aware of the importance of logical reform for the philosophy of mathematics. I was impressed by the fact that, in every discussion, Pino showed more precision and more logical rigor than was shown by anybody else. It was Pino's works that gave the impetus to my own views on the principles of mathematics. Recalling the book after his later work, he provides this evaluation. The Principles of Mathematics, which I finished on 23 May 1902, turned out to be a crude and rather immature draft of the subsequent work Principia Mathematica, from which, however, it differed in containing controversy with other philosophies of mathematics, such self-deprecation from the author after half a century of philosophical growth is understandable. On the other hand, Jules Vuhlman wrote in 1968, The principles inaugurated contemporary philosophy. Other works have won and lost the title. Such is not the case with this one. It is serious, and its wealth perseveres. Furthermore, in relation to it, in a deliberate fashion or not, it locates itself again today in the eyes of all those that believe that contemporary science has modified our representation of the universe and through this representation, our relation to ourselves and to others. When W. V. O. Quine penned his autobiography, he wrote, Pino's symbolic notation took Russell by storm in 1900, but Russell's principles was still in unrelieved prose. I was inspired by its profundity in 1928 and baffled by its frequent opacity. In part it was rough going because of the cumbersomeness of ordinary language as compared with the suppleness of a notation especially devised for these intricate themes. Rereading it years later, I discovered that it had been rough going also because matters were unclear in Russell's own mind in those pioneer days. The Principles was an early expression of analytic philosophy and thus has come under close examination. Peter Hilton wrote, The book has an air of excitement and novelty to it. The salient characteristic of principles is the way in which the technical work is integrated into metaphysical argument. Ivor Grattan Guinness made an in depth study of principles. First, he published Dear Russell, Dear Jourdain, 1977, which included correspondence with Philip Jourdain, who promulgated some of the book's ideas. 
Then in 2000 Grattan Guinness published The Search for Mathematical Roots 1870–1940 which considered the author's circumstances, the book's composition and its shortcomings. In 2006, Philip Ehrlich challenged the validity of Russell's analysis of infinitesimals in the Leibniz tradition. A recent study documents the non sequiturs in Russell's critique of the infinitesimals of Gottfried Leibniz and Hermann Cohen. See also Russellian change <laughs> Notes <laughs> <laughs>